They came to the Patriots. What was your first thought? Oh, my goodness. I like it. Basically says to all the other teams, you missed an opportunity here that, as usual, the Patriots did not. We've got our second video on the Cam Newton signing. If you'd like to watch the first one, then I'll link it in the description. In this one, though, we're going to dive further into the Jarrett Stidham versus Cam Newton debate. We'll talk about Stidham's development and why he fell in the draft. And then we'll go over Newton's injury situation and what the expectations should be for him in New England. There's been four quarterbacks that I've counted since the beginning of the century who were drafted in the fourth round and made a Pro Bowl. If you change that to at least two Pro Bowls, then you're left with Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins. That just shows you how rare a quality quarterback comes later in the draft. With all the Stidham hype going on pre-Cam Newton signing, I just kept thinking Bill Belichick himself passed on the kid multiple times before actually taking him. Obviously that doesn't dictate his future career, any New England fan will tell you that. But let's dive into the chances Stidham has at eventually becoming the Patriots starting quarterback. The pro Stidham pumping hit its peak right after the NFL draft. Everyone and their mother was saying the Patriots didn't draft a quarterback because Stidham is the guy. He was going to have the starting job of the New England Patriots handed to him on a red, white, and blue platter. So let's see where all that came from. We're going to go over Stidham's development from the past year or two. The reason Stidham seemed to fall in the draft was a lack of improvement his junior year. He was seen by some as a future top 10 pick after his sophomore year, but Auburn lost talent to both the draft and to injuries as well. And Auburn's scheme doesn't correlate very well to the NFL, so that's a recipe for a possibly talented quarterback to fall farther than they should. When he got to the Patriots, he looked very fluid in the preseason. Sure, he wasn't playing against NFL starters, but he also wasn't playing with NFL starters. His connection with Jacoby Myers looked like signs of things to come. I mean, you could say Stidham is the reason Myers made the team last year after going undrafted. Of course, Stidham was going to draw some comparisons to Jimmy Garoppolo, and I'd say Stidham's preseason was more impressive than anything Jimmy G did in his first year. Plus, Josh McDaniels has praised Stidham's work ethic and attitude. And former Patriot safety Deron Harmon told the Providence Journal, You see throws out there that he makes where you're just like, wow. You can tell he has the intangibles to be a good pro quarterback. There are other things he does and it shows he's young, but it's all a part of the learning process and the learning curve. He's a guy who comes to work each and every day. He gives us the same attitude. He's a great teammate. Looking forward to when he gets his chance to see what he can do. Then there's the so-called quarterback guru Jordan Palmer, who's worked with Stidham and with Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Joe Burrow, and other young high-profile quarterbacks. He told The Athletic, I think he is a star and he is going to be a big time franchise quarterback. I have felt that way for a couple of years now. I'm totally fine saying that. I don't care that he went in the fourth round. I think he is legitimate. He's going to be the leader of New England for a long time whenever that starts. Go ahead and jump on that bandwagon. So that's some serious confidence from a guy who's certainly at the forefront of the quarterback industry. And it really did seem like the Patriots were set on Sidham being the guy after they didn't draft another quarterback in 2020. So does the team have some confidence in Stidham? I'm sure they do. And both coaches and players have made that clear publicly. Actions speak louder than words, right? When Cam Newton's price tag dropped, Belichick was ready to swoop in and grab him. Given the team's dire cap situation, it would have taken some serious contract do-overs to get Newton at, say, $20 million. If the Patriots were 100% in on Stidham like we thought, then why would they bring in Newton? It's clear Stidham isn't 100% the guy. There has to be some doubt the coaching staff is having in Stidham as a franchise quarterback. As I said in the previous video, that doesn't mean Stidham has no chance. Newton still has plenty of question marks of his own, but the upside is just different. Newton has proven he can play in this league. 
You just don't know what you have in Stidham until he can get at least a couple NFL starts. And the question about this different type of offseason that we discussed before, well, that could arguably hurt Stidham more than Newton. At least Newton has been reading and playing against NFL defenses for 10 years. Sure, he's got a brand new team for the first time in his career, and this offseason could get in the way of his Patriots development, but I'd say it hurts Stidham more. He's never started an NFL game, and when he did go in, he threw a pick six. He does have an extremely small sample size though, so I guess we can't really hold that against him. What I will hold against him though is being a second year QB in the NFL, trying to earn a starting job for the first time in his career, without the chance to get in the meeting rooms with Belichick and McDaniels, without the coaches able to watch him on the field and break down possible reads and mechanics adjustments, and without pass rushers coming at him. Because I will say in Stidham's impressive preseason, the big thing going wrong was holding on to the ball for too long. That's a hard thing to change without being on the field. I'm not saying Newton has Tom Brady reads and mechanics, but at least he's been with NFL coaches for the past decade. And honestly, if anything, Newton's brain might be underrated. Former teammate Greg Olson said, I don't think people realize just how much he understands the game and how well he sees the field. He does things innately that don't necessarily come naturally to all quarterbacks. He sees things, he feels things, he just has a sense of the bigger picture on the field. Mike Lombardi, who used to work for the Patriots and has a son who is the current assistant quarterback's coach of the team, he wrote, Newton will not be walking into the Tom Brady offense when he arrives in Foxborough. The Patriots are way too smart to force a system of offense on Newton. They will change what they do to fit Newton's game. On the physical side, you have to wonder about Newton's health. In 2019, he played only two games with a completion percentage of 56%. That sounds terrible, but USA Today broke down his throws, and most of the inaccurate throws were going to his right. The theory was his mechanics got out of whack, especially when going to the right because he couldn't put much weight on his leading foot. He had the same surgery on that foot that Ben Roethlisberger returned from years ago, so it seems that won't be anything close to a career ender. Even looking past the injuries, I'm not gonna act like Newton's perfect. He's got what sort of seems like a one-pitch pitcher. Yes, he's got a strong arm, but I've seen too many Panthers games where all he has to do is drop it off to Christian McCaffrey, and he just fires it, which then turns a routine play into more of an iffy one. On the bright side, despite having shoulder surgery, his ball still has plenty of zip on it. And now he sounds as healthy as he's been in years. The last time he played a full season in 2017, the Panthers win 11 and 5. Then in 2018, they started 6 and 2 before he re-injured the shoulder. He honestly looked like a top 5 quarterback before that injury. So what I'm saying is that it's clear Newton can be a winning quarterback in the league when healthy. Some people may think he's a one-year wonder, but I don't think Bill Belichick believes that at all. Former Panthers fullback Mike Tolbert told The Athletic, I've been around during games when Bill Belichick has flat out said to Cam he loves his game, continue to do what he's doing. I know some of the players on the Patriots personally, and they all rave about how Bill's always praising Cam for his ability. Although Stidham could easily beat Brady in a race, Cam Newton is still Cam Newton. He still has the most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback in NFL history, and although the Patriots wide receiving core should be healthier than last season, it should be useful to have some unscripted plays made by the quarterback when nobody can get open. The offensive line should also improve, which will give whoever starts more time. I'm sure the Patriots are still holding on to hope that Stidham could be the future. If anything, this deal could give Stidham another year to develop. But when a former MVP's price goes down as much as it did, it's worth it. And if you want to win as many games as you can this season, then right now my theory is pulling me toward Newton. Let me know in the comments who you guys think should start. If you enjoyed this video, then please sub it up for more content just like this. The only thing making 2020 worse would be Cam Newton bringing back the dab. When you look in the mirror, what you see? When you, when you looking this way, you looking in the mirror. Scratch that. Cam Newton acting like a dog is worse.